foundation about visual art and photography. If you want to help us, just drop a donation on buymeacoffee.com slash berlinexplorer. So welcome to this other 50 minutes of experience. And today I'm with Alex Nevilishko uh, from Ukraine. Uh, welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for inviting. <laughs> really nice to have you here and especially because uh, from your Instagram account, uh, the first things uh, came up to my mind uh, is when I have read on your description based on true events. And today I want to really talk about these uh, true events. I'm really curious about your point of view and uh, what happened in these uh, events you have uh, shooted before. No problem. Uh, happy to share. So just uh, to start to know something about you, can you just introduce us, uh, who are you and uh, how did you start also with photography and then we go a bit more deep uh, inside of the content. Sure, sure. So uh, hmm. um, by day I'm having an IT job. I'm a UX designer, doing it for over a decade. Uh, had a bunch of different hobbies in my life. But this one, I think, is really taken most of the space now. And uh, uh, I am from Ukraine originally, but moved with my family here uh, six years ago, I guess, already, to Czech Republic, uh, Prague. And uh, how I started with photography, I'll try to make this long story shorter. So I think I was infected first by this uh, when I was maybe five years old, my older brother, he's 12 years older. So when I was preschool age, he was a teenager. Uh, it was end of 80s. And he was shooting film a lot um, because he liked it. He had a, that uh, old, uh, it was not really old when back in the day, <laughs> now it's ancient, uh, Soviet rangefinder Fed 5B, I guess that was the model. Uh, and he was developing everything uh, on his own and uh, doing prints. So, uh, yeah, I remember that magic of the dark room, smelly chemicals, uh, huge and larger, and all these uh, things you need to actually make the image from, uh, from the camera. Uh, but then, of course, uh, these depressive 90s come, then I was a teenager myself, busy with everything, like a lot of things happening in my life. And it's like three years ago, my friend from Krakow, he is traveling to see me and he brings a film camera with him. I was looking at this huge film camera, Kiev 19. It's an SLR, but it's as huge that I think you can fit, you could actually fit uh, uh, mid-format uh, film inside of it. And it's super heavy. I was looking at it and making fun of him like all of the time. Like, what the hell do you do? You really like you, you shoot film photos? And uh, how do you do that later? He told me that it's not such a big of a hassle. You just pass it to the lab. They even make you digital scans out of the uh, um, uh, film directly. So I started thinking about this, like, okay, but well, maybe why don't I try it? Uh, and I remembered that we had that old camera somewhere. My mom was traveling to uh, Prague to uh, see us. And I asked her to bring our old, uh, we had an SLR also in the family, uh, Zenit 3M. It's also huge, heavy, built like a tank. It can be used like a self-defense tool. And uh, she brought it. I, I wasted a few rolls uh, just because I didn't know how that uh, old uh, terrible device operates <laughs> but uh, i managed to make some photos out of that and then everything started uh i started uh, like grabbing camera with me uh every day and basically every day with me maybe even 24 7 because it's uh, only 
it's on the storage which is next to the bed so when i sleep the camera's next to me when i go somewhere it's in my backpack are you sure you're not shooting picture during your sleep uh it's mechanical i trust it <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i've seen you have uh, two interesting profiles on instagram one is uh, 39 exposures and another is 40 exposures and uh, can you tell me the the i mean uh, for sure, the obviously difference is between them is one is black and white, another is color. But can you tell me the difference between 39 and 40? <laughs> so uh, I originally was shooting solely black and white on film. Uh, well, not, not really just only black and white. I was buying sometimes uh, color film, experimenting with this. It's, it's fun. It's interesting. It's, it's still fun. I didn't try all of the film stocks. Uh, but uh, also I realized that I don't want to maintain my personal Instagram account uh, because it's already turning into Facebook. I'm not Facebooking much. Uh, for me, it's just an overhelm of information which doesn't give me anything. And my personal account in Instagram is like a duplication of that weird experience I don't want to have. So I decided, okay, since I'm shooting a lot of black and white, let me maybe have a separate account just for that. I'll be following mostly those people. I enjoy to see their work. If on occasion I need to care about updates uh, in life events of my friends, maybe I will just open Facebook and see what's happening, which I don't frequently do. So anyway, I created my uh, Instagram account just for photography. Maybe you're curious to hear why 39 exposures. Uh, because the film camera uh, I'm using mostly for black and white shooting is Pentax ME Super. Uh, it's a tiny, small SLR camera. And because it's so small, uh, actually, it doesn't stretch the film roll uh, that, that much like Canon or Nikon does. And as a result, you can really uh, utilize a lot of space on the roll. So instead of 36, um, sometimes you can get in 40 frames. And about 39 is like a standard for me. Uh, and it, I was maintaining just that account in black and white for like maybe two years. And I don't know what happened, but I started shooting color more. And I didn't want to mix the feed with color stuff. and I was thinking, okay, so what could be the another account then? What exposures? Because <laughs> uh, again, I'm putting uh, Fuji mostly. I really love that uh, green color of uh, Fuji film. And that film actually is pretty generous. It gives you sometimes 40 frames, again, from Pentax and maybe even from other camera. Uh, so it kind of like shows that my uh, specifics of what I, what I use for capturing images. I use film, it has its limitations, it's a limited count of exposures, but I do love to get more of it. So it's, it's like, uh, maybe it symbolizes what I'm using, I don't know. It's, it's, nice, it's nice, the story is behind. And uh, it's really interesting uh, in some ways, your work in color and your work in black and white and there is a lot to watch to analyze in your, in your picture yeah, there are a lot of picture uh, and uh, they capture i mean in color you are totally different than black and white this is incredible because it seems like there are two different persons shooting pictures and uh, it's like, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> the point is uh, you are not shooting with the, with the digital camera. So then you're just shooting uh, with film uh, and uh, they are completely different. And I would love to know more about uh, uh, that. If, if, you, if you feel uh, different when you see in color and, or you see in the world in black and white, I mean, what, what is the, the feeling different that you have that make this totally, completely different 
of uh, approaching of the subject, uh, approaching of the structure of the picture. Uh, what makes this magic? Uh, I would say for me, it's a completely different mindset. Uh, that's why maybe I'm shooting for like almost three months only color. I didn't have a mood for black and white. Uh, summer is a lot of sun, a lot of going outside on the sunny weather, uh, maybe meeting friends and uh, being more extrovert maybe than usually I am. And that's how this period is different. And that's why maybe I'm shooting more color. Maybe another reason is that I have like a full fridge of expired film, which I really enjoy. So I'm, I'm, I'm like watching in this, this huge storage. I think, okay, I need to use it. <laughs> Actually, it's just been stored for a long time, uh, not for just being in a fridge. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, like a practical comment. But uh, when you ask about black and white, I think uh, it's another time of the year. Uh, when I think I um, mean more with myself, going less outside, because the weather is such rainy uh, that you cannot get even a camera out of your backpack. And maybe that's how I ended up spending more time in the subway. And uh, actually gives me a lot of inspiration. But somehow in a subway, not especially during winter, uh, autumn, even outside, uh, during this period of, or like a season of the year. Uh, I would say I see everything in black and white and uh, I see pictures completely differently. And what you can communicate with black and white, I think in most cases doesn't go that well with the colorful uh, or with the color photography. Uh, black and white, uh, I think it's quite obvious if I say it's all about Shapes, shadows, um, silhouettes, and uh, maybe you can filter out from your frame really a lot of things that you think don't matter. Uh, with color, everything is punching you in your face, like everything you capture is standing out. Everything has some kind of a color structure, uh, and maybe this is fine for summer. Uh, but uh when sun is gone no flowers uh less people outside i think black and white fits me well and uh why i'm talking about actually seasons because it's not like i can switch cameras from day to day you know oh i have a black and white mood so i'm grabbing black and white film loaded camera today and i have a different camera with color and this is going to be happening tomorrow it's uh, like month by month uh, and I understand the, the, the point. And there are some, uh, I mean, the, the, the things is based on true stories. And uh, which stories do you think are you telling? Uh, I believe that a good photography, well, not, I cannot really say good good photo, uh, but actually photo, I think in general should convey some kind of situation. If you maybe could think about what could stand behind, or you don't know when you start asking yourself a lot of questions, when you see, when you see the picture, I think then it means that the picture works. It triggers something for the person who is, um, observing them. Uh, because I think that exactly works for the person who is doing the picture. If something is catching your eye, you, in most cases, don't know why. You just follow the impulse. And I think that kind of resonates with the person who is also watching the pictures. So I don't think I will be actually answering your question, what stories are behind, because I don't know myself. I'm just going outside into the city, uh, observing things, 
and uh, occasionally capture it. Um, but mostly, I'm, maybe what I learned from photography is uh, observing skills. Not everything you see can be captured uh, because of different limitations. Uh, it's, you don't have enough of focal lens of your lens. Um, your film just finished and you see something cool or just it was so quick that the scene went away and you didn't grab your camera out or you were not comfortable to shoot with uh, with your camera just right now because people are watching you i don't know <laughs> or something like this but i really appreciate what you said because uh, i heard a lot of people uh, find an explanation for them uh, pictures and uh, what you say this is totally true it's uh, you go outside and uh, what else happened in front of you yeah there is a reason or another and you can choose to take or to don't take a picture and uh, i think this is something <laughs> a lot of people has to learn from that uh, most of the time we try to 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 explain something uh, already the picture explained to us and uh, what we can add more inside of our information it's what we cannot see in the picture it's something totally different but uh, i like also the point that you said you don't know yourself and uh, this is uh i mean this is true <clears throat> but it's true for everyone i think I, I i don't know myself and that's why i go on doing my projects and my stuff because I want probably know more and more and more and more and there is never a hand. The only end is to die, I think. <laughs> I mean, this, my mother will uh, will say uh, the only things true in the in the world is uh, the death and in the end is, is true. <laughs> it's uh... the only things sure we have, no? And we have everyone in common that. But uh, what we... Words. What we're doing uh, during the, our life, uh, for sure, most of the time we don't ask to ourselves why we're doing that stuff. And uh, it's uh, also a good point uh, that to, when we share what we do, other people probably can see more than us and also show to ourselves who we are. And it was really nice to talk with you, Alex, and I hope to talk with you again and to go a bit more deep in uh, these true stories. Maybe will come out from your mind some moments particular and funny also. I, I, I will love to talk about funny stuff, funny stories happen in front of us. Also, if we don't shoot pictures of them. And yeah, for everyone who want look the work of Alex, will be the link in the description. And uh, thank you a lot again. Thanks a lot for inviting me. That's actually the first time I'm talking about photography. Uh, I feel a bit weird, but uh, very pleased. <laughs> Thanks a, a lot. Thank you. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Learn more about our project at allmylinks.com slash Berlin Explorer or visit our Instagram and follow Berlin Explorer project.